I'd like to call to order the regular council meeting on April 23rd, 2018. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and stay standing for the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of serving our city. Keep us faithful to the meeting the needs of our communities. We thank you for the blessings of our forefathers who help us mold our political freedom. And Heavenly Father, your words tell us to never look ahead of the change to look ahead to the changes and the challenges in life in fear as they arise, but look at them with full assurance that you will deliver us out of them. God will lead you safely through all things when you cannot stand, and he will carry you in his arms. Lord, we ask for your blanket of safety placed over our public, our police and fire, and protect our men and women in the armed forces as they serve throughout the world. In your name, amen. Amen. All right, council. We have a council, a council member, uh, Stiff, is not with us tonight, so um, we're going to have to vote on this. So um, I don't have to do I don't have to do a motion. Okay. So all in favor of his absence, say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Thank well, um, we're going to the communication item. As you know, this is a this Actually, is a fun time. So we're going to. Mayor, I'm sorry. Yes, you still need to do the motion in the second, but not a roll call vote. Okay, it's just a regular you. vote. I'm All right. Sorry. Could I hear a motion, please? So moved. Second. I heard a motion from Vice Mayor Campbell and a second from Councilman Osborne. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Our first item on communications is we have the Desert Edge High School Choir with a special performance. And aren't we lucky tonight? Thank Good you. Good evening, Thank Mayor and Council. Coming. Tonight I heard we them have just recently, and I was so impressed when you were practicing for the play. It was just outstanding. So tonight we have a very special performance from about 30 members of the Desert Edge High School right. Choir. 30. I can see each and every one of these beautiful students. <laughs> I was wondering when we... <laughs> Six. 
All of my dear. I'd like to introduce my husband. He's here, and I couldn't believe you came to a council meeting. Now I know why. So stand so you can get this. of the evening to all of you in the audience and those listening. You know, life is great. And just because you get a year older doesn't mean you're not useful. So you have the council. You can work as long as I have 80 years, and it will be beyond to finish this term. But um, it keeps you young, keeps you learning. And it's inspirational uh, to, to be able to greet people like these young students. So anyway, I, I thank you very much for this. I'm on awe. I had a party that Patty and Hannah, uh, what did she do? She put it together, right? Help me with this. I'm, I'm, I'm stumbling here. And then this uh, morning I walk in, it was birthday party at work, and then this. So I'm blessed. Thank you all very much. All right, so the next one... I'm going to be reading a proclamation. So would you come forth? And I'm going to come down there. Not yet. Do you, not yet. you have? Not yet. OK, go ahead. I have a short Good. presentation first. Uh, please introduce Good yourself evening, since I didn't. Mayor and Council. I'm Randy Westacott, the chief building official here with the city. And I'm here tonight to bring awareness to Building Safety Month, which is celebrated in the month of May. So with that. I was told this. There we go. So Building Safety Month has been celebrated for the last 38 years uh, by the International Code Council and, and many of its 64,000 members worldwide. And it just brings awareness to uh, building codes that are needed to protect our citizens and our community. I have a brief uh, video here that I'd like to play for you. And then one more slide. All communities need building codes to protect their citizens from disasters like fires, inclement weather, and structural collapse. Current strong building codes are the best way to protect our homes, offices, schools, and manufacturing facilities. Code officials work tirelessly every day to enforce building codes that keep the public safe and our communities strong. Each May, the International Code Council sponsors Building Safety Month to highlight important aspects of building safety so civic leaders and citizens understand and appreciate how building codes and inspectors ensure safety where we live, work, and play. We focus on several critical aspects of building safety. One important aspect is mentoring the next generation of building professionals and meeting the future need for more trained building inspectors, plumbing inspectors, and fire marshals. ICC created its high school technical training program for this reason. The HSTTP helps students understand how codes and regulations are used and provides them with up-to-date code knowledge and training that leads to a skilled workforce. We also promote awareness of the importance of building design solutions for all ages, especially our vulnerable aging populations. As one quarter of the U.S. population reaches retirement age in the next decade, this trend will affect every interior environment, private, commercial, and public. We need smart solutions that grow with a complex community dynamic. Another area ICC emphasizes is the role that disaster preparedness plays in our communities. History has shown time and again how strong, up-to-date building codes are often the difference between life and death. We can't control when disaster strikes, but by adopting current strong building codes and increasing effective code administration, we can protect our communities from the effects of natural hazards. These important safety methods preserve and protect our health and safety during a disaster, decrease our insurance and tax rates, protect our economic investments, ensure continuity of essential community services, and bolster rapid recovery. Lastly, when it comes to building safety, investments in technology benefit us all by making our communities safer, more productive, and by stimulating economic growth. Science and technology are leading the way for designing and constructing safe, efficient, and resilient homes and buildings. 
up-to-date building safety codes and standards allow buildings to incorporate proven technology, ensuring safety for lives, properties, and investors. While Building Safety Month is a time to reflect how our lives are improved through building codes, as well as the men and women who ensure they are used effectively, the message is important year-round. We encourage all to learn more and help spread the word in their communities. Good building codes and effective code administration protects lives, ensures safety, and makes communities stronger. Visit our website, iccsafe.org, to learn more about how to make your community as strong as it can be. So each week of Building Safety Month, there's a different theme. And in week one, it's partnering with code officials to build stronger, safe communities. And that's where we encourage the development community to partner up with our building safety division and bring these buildings to certificate of occupancy. Week two is advancing resilient communities through science and technology. And that's just realizing that there's so much technology out there. It's changing all the time. Staying up to date on uh, the most current adopted building codes helps us put those into the codes so that it's much easier for the development community to take advantage of those improving technologies. Week three is protecting communities from disaster. And that's the earth, wind, and fire component. So they were a singing group back in the day. But anyway, uh, we, we, got it. <laughs> we, we don't have to worry about too much shaking around here. But, but that information is in the codes as well and helps to, to protect our community. Week four is safeguarding our water, be it in the backyard or the tap water that comes out of the faucet. The codes do have information in there that help us provide that protection throughout our community. And week five, of course, is improving education and training standards for a safer tomorrow. And that's just encouraging us as building code professionals to stay up to date on the new improving technologies. And with that, I'd like to kind of take a moment and let you know what your building safety division is comprised of. We have four city inspectors and three contract inspectors and one inspection supervisor. We have one combination inspector and reviewer, and we have four plan review professionals. And that is one team dedicated to ensuring the safety of our community. And with that, I'd like to introduce some of our members that are here tonight in support of Building Safety Month and they'll come up for the reading of the proclamation and I'll introduce them as they arrive. Thank you. That's correct. So first we have David Smith. He's one of our plan reviewers. Ron Dickerson, one of our plan reviewers. Mike Combs, one of our building inspectors. Lazaro Vithia, one of our plan reviewers. And Mike Nassar, another one of our plan reviewers. And with that, Mayor, we have this nice little short proclamation for you. <laughs> well, gentlemen, it's so nice that you came tonight, and we do feel that you are an important component of the city and for our residents, and keeping people safe, it's an everyday event, so we thank you for all your work. So this is to you and the industry, and it is long, uh, but they have a hard long, they have a tough job. It, it doesn't, you don't do it overnight, so... They deserve this, and you're going to have to help me take this page away when I, I need to read the second to. page, okay? okay? Whereas our city is committed to recognizing our growth and strength, depends on the safety and the economic value of the homes, buildings, and infrastructure that serve our citizens, both in an everyday life and in times of natural disaster. Whereas our confidence in the structural integrity of these buildings that make up our community is achieved through the devotion of the vigilant guardians that stand before me. Building safety and fire prevention officials, architects, engineers, builders, tradespeople, design professionals, laborers, and other in the construction industry who work around the year. They work late at night sometimes and early in the morning to ensure the safe construction of the buildings. And whereas these guardians are dedicated members of the International Code Council, a U.S.-based organization that brings together local, state, and federal officials that are experts in the built environment to create and implement the highest quality codes to protect us in the buildings where we live, learn, work, worship, and play. And whereas our nation benefits economically from using the international codes that are developed by the national and voluntary consensus codes and standards developing organizations 
our government is able to avoid the high costs, the complexity of developing and maintaining these codes, which are the most widely adopted building safety and fire prevention codes in the nation. These modern building codes include safeguards to protect the public from natural disasters such as hurricanes, snowstorms, oh, thank God we don't have snowstorms, okay? <laughs> Tornadoes, oh, absolutely. Wildfire, <laughs> Wildland fires, floods, and earthquakes, whereas the Building Safety Month is sponsored by the International Code Council to remind the public about the critical role of our community's largely unknown guardians of public safety. I'm going to say that again. Largely unknown guardians of public safety. Terribly important. Our local code officials so assure us of safe, efficient, and liable buildings that are essential to keep America great again. Is that I did again? Wasn't supposed to. I couldn't resist it. <laughs> I don't think everybody got that, but okay. I got it. You got it, okay. Got it. Whereas the building code saves lives, the theme for the Building Safety Month 2018, it encourages all Americans to raise awareness of the importance of building safety and resilient construction, fire prevention and disaster mitigation, and in the construction industry. Building Safety Month 2018 encourages appropriate steps everyone can take to assure that the places where we live, learn, work, and worship and play are safe and recognize that the countless lives that have been saved due to the implementation of safety codes by local and state agency. Whereas each year in observance of Building Safety Month, Americans are asked to consider the commitment to improve building safety and economic investment at home and in the community and to acknowledge the essential services provided to all of us by the local and state building departments, that's you, and uh, fire prevention bureaus and federal agencies in protecting lives and property. Now, therefore, I, Georgia Lord, the mayor of the city of Goodyear of Arizona, do hereby proclaim this month, May 28th, as Building Safety Month and encourage citizens to join with their communities in participation in the Building Safety Month activities given under my hand in these free United States in the city of Goodyear, Arizona, on the 23rd day of April, and my birthday, uh, 2018, to have caused this seal of the city of Goodyear to be affixed and have made this proclamation public. Congratulations. Thank you, Mayor. All right, the next item, 4.3, is our last on communication, and we will receive a summary, and this is all exciting to hear these numbers, of the 2018 spring training activities. Bruce Kessman, the ballpark general manager, will be presenting. Bruce? Good evening, Mayor and Council. It's hard to believe that it's been nearly a month now since spring training ended here in Goodyear, and, you know, we did face some challenges this, this past season with the earlier start and also the fewer games, which was due to the collective bargaining agreement that was passed during the off season. So Major League Baseball now has moved up by a few days, which spring training moves up, shortens up a little bit. So, um, you know, this past season we had 29 total games and drew nearly 163,000 people, which is down from 2017. But also remember last year we had 33 home games. So with four less games, um, we drew a little bit less, but actually our average per game we increased that by about 6% this year on average per game. And across the Cactus League, uh, the Cactus League attendance this year was down about 145,000, which was due to about 24 fewer games this past season. And this slide here shows where we kind of rank against uh, amongst the other Cactus League facilities, and our position uh, still remains the same. And also having the four fewer games this season, 
it did have an impact on our total revenue. This year's total revenue is uh, 6.1 million, which uh, made up about 2.7 of that is tickets. 1.7 comes from concessions. Uh, the team shop produced a little over a million dollars in the novelties. And then the remaining balance is made up with parking sponsorships and the miscellaneous revenue comes from the ticket royalties and some of the other fan experiences and ancillary revenues that we generate throughout the season. But if you do notice that the trend, even though we had a little spike in 2017, we're still on an upward trend, uh, surpassing where we were in 2016. And of course, those are the gross revenues when we uh, do all this, uh, the net shares. This is how they break out this year. Um, the 1.6 million that comes from this, uh, coming back to the city, that's our percentage of the tickets, concessions, parking, sponsorships, also the facility surcharges and the, on the all seats plus the premium surcharges as well. And then the Indians and the Reds each uh, estimated those shares. We're still in the process of the whole reconciliation uh, with the finance team right now. And of course, we had you know, some great highlights this year, uh, starting off with the uh, Kia Grand Slam car giveaway, the, this promotion, bottom of the third, every, uh, every game. Uh, if one of our home team's uh, player hits a Grand Slam, one of our lucky fans goes home with a brand new Kia Soul, courtesy of Rio Kia. And sure enough, uh, Jan Gomes, base is loaded, takes one deep over the left field wall, up above into the berm, and just absolutely electrified the crowd. The crowd went crazy, and of course, uh, two of our fans went home with a, a brand new car. So, and they were actually from Cleveland, so you can't get better marketing than that. So, from the <laughs> Cleveland area, that uh, they're going to be talking about Goodyear and the fun they had when they're back at home. And you know, some of the other highlights really are Kids Day Sundays. We continue to grow, uh, which involves the reading program. The kids draw the lineups. This year, we also introduced just kids-only giveaways. So the first 250 kids through the, uh, through the gates received just their own special giveaway, courtesy of the teams. And then we also had uh, two other great giveaways this year with the Trevor Bauer uh, minifigure uh, giveaway, which was hugely popular. And of course, Mr. Reglades in our very own F-35 jet. I mean, that received actually national attention for that one. And really, we continue to focus on that fan experience with our in-game promotions and creating the fun and the energy when the folks are inside the, inside the ballpark. And every half inning, we're uh, doing some sort of activity, whether it be a contest or a promotion on the video board. And really, when, it, when we look at our fan survey, that this shows that they're really enjoying and having a good time when they're at the ballpark. That maintaining that 4.88 overall experience and really keep fairly flat with all the other uh, areas that we have. And I think what's also equally as important is the, the reviews that we've been getting uh, via social media. And we all know that social media is an easy platform, you know, for people mostly to complain. But for us, that uh, we've been maintaining a 4.5 out of a five-point scale in, uh, with Facebook, TripAdvisor, and Google. And that's over 2,000 reviews that we received uh, via the social media platforms. And I'll read a couple of these um, reviews. Uh, you know, very nice ballpark, facility is very well maintained, ticket pricing was good for uh, two for spring training games. What a great experience, great environment, and super friendly staff. And I don't think that ever really gets old, old is hearing that super friendly staff. I know we really pride ourselves here in Goodyear being and having the nice friendly staff, and it really goes to show the work that's being done through our volunteers as they're great ambassadors for the ballpark. And of course, the planning uh, process starts now for 2019. We do have a few uh, off-season events that will be coming up with graduations, but the planning for the 10-year celebration begins now. Please proceed, presentation. Are we ready? Thank you very much. And I know the council's wanting to make some comments on, so don't go anywhere. So, Joe Vazillo will be first. Councilman Vazillo. First thing is. Um, I know my granddaughter loved her experience there. Got to sing the Star Spangled Banner, 10 years old. It was an awesome experience. So again, making memories long-term, it was fantastic. Uh, the question I have is, if I recall right, your Indians had about 1.2 split, 1.2 million. Uh, is that 1.2 before the debt service comes out to cover those improvements over there at the uh, ballpark? That those revenues will be used to pay the debt service. Pay the debt and service, okay. And as monopolies receive any revenue, so all of that will be used to pay the debt service. Okay. I forget what the debt service was. I don't know if it was a million. 
Do you remember what it was, Doug? Oh, well, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> It's at 1.25. It's about $80,000 more than what they collected this year. So we'll be invoicing them for the difference and they will pay. Okay. Us. Thank you. Councilor Hampton? Yeah, I, I thought it was a great experience, especially opening day. It was a good, a really good time. And uh, yeah, obviously, I mean, the ratings show, speak for themselves. The fans had a good time and a good value for the money and definitely a good. Uh, a good thing for our city for uh, to bring those residents in to show off Goodyear, and to um, and to have a good time while seeing a, seeing a great baseball game. So, thank you to your staff. I know it's a lot of hard work prepping for it and uh, getting it ready. So, thank you for that. And and like I said, just continuing to offer a great a great venue to see a baseball game. So, thank you. Councilmember Lorotano. And I'm going to echo that. Thank you for all the hard work you and your staff put together to put, and all the volunteers too, for this great season. Because I think that says a lot on social media when you're getting those type of reviews. Um, I, I know we had some more night games this year. Are we going to? I assume we're going to keep up with those. Those seem to be really popular. It really depends on the teams. There has been a shift in Major League Baseball to start talking a little bit more about playing more night games um, as the teams are and players are preparing for the regular season. So. We'll see. It's up to the teams, though. Okay. Well, we always push for them. Great, great season. Yeah, I saw those were packed, the couple we had. So, Councilman Osborne? Well, thank you. And, and thank you to your staff for the creativity and uh, all the different things that you try and the different giveaways and things like that. They're awesome. Um, I also uh, used the, uh, a baseball game for a team-building event just for my own staff and my own business. And, you know, those kinds of things um, – really bring people together and they enjoy the atmosphere and uh you know as the old saying baseball mom and apple pie i mean it was really a, a great time and so um it was a d-backs game and it, it was a lot of fun good job guys vice mayor campo well i'd like to thank you bruce and your staff for an extraordinary job again this year it was a wonderful season even though it was um shorter it seemed long to us because there were so many night games everywhere. Um, the, your staff is incredible, and our ambassadors, uh, all of the, the folks who volunteer are um, just the, the greatest people, and they just love what they do. They love Goodyear. They love baseball, and they love working for you. So thank you so much for everything. Um, my, I took my family to three of the games, and um, it, it's really, up. we tried almost all the food. They're wonderful. Uh, the beer was good, my kids said. I didn't try the beer. <laughs> they thought that was good. I liked the mustard. That was good. But everything was just so, so wonderful. The, the restrooms were clean as they could be. Parking was really not a problem. And if you needed help, you had enough help there to, to uh, tell people where to go and and where to find things. So thank you so much. We appreciate all. And the fields were in excellent condition. They were beautiful. So thank you. Thank you. Bruce, nice presentation. And um, we love baseball. And we're very fortunate in Goodyear to have this entertainment and this sport for people. And your entire team does an outstanding job. And you're right, the, the lawn, the grass is fantastic. So let's give them a round of applause for that work. <laughs> All right, now is the time for citizens who would like to address the City Council on any non-agenda item within the jurisdiction of the Goodyear City Council. Do we have any cards? No, Mayor. Does anyone in the audience want to speak? All right, let's get on with the consent agenda. Um, so um, do I tell them are you going to read it first, or should I just read them through? How are we going to do the one? I'll go ahead and read everything, and then uh, we'll ask for the motion for the other, okay. the majority of the items first. Great, go ahead. Will the city clerk please read the consent agenda item 6.1 through 6.6 .6 by title only, please. 6.1, approved draft minutes from a regular meeting and a special meeting held on March 26, 2018 and a special meeting held on April 2nd, 2018. 6.2, adopt resolution number 2018-1862 authorizing the issuance, sale, and delivery of its McDowell Road Commercial Quarter Improvement District Refunding Bond Series 2018. 6.3, adopt resolution number 2018-1867, amending and adopting the revised City of Goodyear, Arizona 
policy guidelines and application procedures for the establishment of community facilities districts and providing for an effective date. 6.4, approve the map of dedication for Sedella Phase 2 North Sedella Parkway subject to one stipulation. 6.5, accept the dedication of a public sidewalk, utility, and access easement from Arizona Public Service Company and Arizona Corporation. And 6.6, .6, approve the mayor signing a letter of support for the Greater Phoenix Economic Council, GPEC, Smart Region Initiative. Thank you. Does anyone in the public wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? Does anyone on the council? Mayor. I'd like to recuse myself from 6.2. And the reason? I own property in this area. Thank you very much. So um, what we're going to do is go ahead and vote on the other ones, and then uh, you will go out on okay, 6.1. Thank you. So yes, Councilman Bazzillo. I, I just have a general question on 6.2. 6 6.2? Yeah. Um, well, can we wait on that because it's conflict of interest with uh, Councilman Osborne and so we need her out of the room. So, uh, so what I'm going to ask you if you will give me a motion on a second for all except 6.2. Does that do it or I need a name off that? All right. So do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. All right. Her motion from uh, Councilman Ortano and I believe it's a second from the Vice Mayor. So roll call vote please. Vice Mayor Campbell. Aye. Councilmember Osborne? Aye. Councilmember Pizzillo? Aye. Councilmember Loritano? Aye. Councilmember Hampton? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Motion carries. Councilman Osborne is leaving the room. Left the group. So I need a motion on 6.2 and a second. So moved. Second. All right. I heard a motion from Councilman Loritano and a second from, from me. Council, oh, from Councilman, uh, I'm some Vice Mayor. Mm -hmm. All right. Roll call vote, please. You're, you're, I, I don't know. Joe has a question in a moment. Joe? Yes, it, it, I know the answer, but for those that are listening, can you just high level, Doug, high level um, the value to the city with this action? Absolutely. This action is a refinancing of the McDowell Road Commercial Corridor Improvement District. We're refinancing approximately $35 million worth of debt of which the city is contingently liable, which means if the payments are not made, the city would have to step in and make the payments for the district. This refunding cuts almost two full years off the end of the repayment cycle, saving about $6.8 million. So it reduces our contingent liability immediately. Thank you. Thank you. This is positive for our city. Oh, Thank yeah. you. Yes, that's why I asked yeah. that. <laughs> okay. uh, I was agreeing to say, Joe answered, answered what I wanted to do, so thank you. <laughs> okay, so we're happy about this. I'm happy with we're this. All I'd like saving money. So all right, good. well, let's, we're, we're smiling. Let's vote on it. Uh, roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Campbell? Aye. Councilmember Pizzillo? Aye. Councilmember Loretano? Aye. Councilmember Hampton? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. Great. Let's go to the business. I'd like council to refrain from asking questions until the staff presentations are complete and the motion on the table. So 7.1 is on business is to consider approving the fiscal year FY19 annual Public Art Plan. Gailene, hello Gailene, uh, Slinsky, Arts and Culture Coordinator, and La Laura Canino, Arts and Culture Commissioner, presenting. Yes, ladies. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you. Um, I would, um, I am joined this evening by Arts and Culture Commissioner, Laura Cano. Laura is the chairman of our Public Art Subcommittee, and she'll be helping uh, me present this uh, plan to you. Um, at this time, before we move into the presentation, I would like to take a moment to recognize our Arts and Culture Commissioners that we do have in the audience. If you would please stand. And could you stay standing? We get it. Oh, no, it's good. I, I want to. I really want to thank them for their time and dedication to the arts and culture for our city and really for their expertise that they do bring to the table when they make these recommendations to council. So thank you very much. And with that, we will get started. So tonight I'm going to provide a quick overview of the Arts and Culture Commission, hit the highlights of our current fiscal year, and then also uh, give you our recommendations going forward. The Goodyear Arts and Culture Commission was created by Council in 2006 for the purpose of providing leadership in creating community identity and for creating opportunities for bringing all people together through the arts. Our work helps to increase resident quality of life, helps with economic development, and also helps to shape Goodyear's future as we move forward. 
And this year we added several new commissioners with a diverse background and also a great enthusiasm for the work and a strong desire to make a difference. So great things are happening in arts and culture this year. There are public art installations with the Centennial Mosaic Trail Markers and Library Gathering Space Hangout uh, have both been successfully completed. The Goodyear Com Community Park Stage Mosaic is currently underway with the recent selection of a local artist named Chris Kolash. She has extensive public art experience and a great background of community collaboration. To enhance the fascia of the stage, she will connect with the Creative Aging Group on May 8th, and then she will enlist the forces of uh, about 120 Goodyear youth on June 5th to create hundreds of ceramic tiles. So this will truly be a multi-generational project. The Artist Embellished Traffic Cabinets was recently approved as a pilot, and we're very excited about that. A call to artists has been developed and will be going out soon, and we expect the project to be done in the fall when the temperatures will be a little bit more conducive for the artists working outside. The Goodyear Mobile Museum continues to be, flourish and be very well received. We've added several new panels this year to reflect different facets of Goodyear history. And this year we're making a change because the museum will, no, will not only just be mobile, but it will be portable as well. We've been working with a team of educators to create curriculum that shows Goodyear history that will meet state standards. And so this team is going to put together five toolboxes that can be checked out by local schools. Nice. And uh, for under arts events and programs, I wanted to highlight creative aging. Last year it was a pilot, and this year it is a full program with over 120 participants uh, age 60 and over who give the program 100% satisfaction. In May, we're adding a performing arts segment to their program, so I'm sure that's going to be a, a, a lot of fun and a big stretch for some. So this slide tells the why we do a public art program. The, a culture of art is the direction that we're heading, and it's the path that we want to continue. We want to ensure, ensure that art is accessible to everybody in the community, and we want to explore areas where, that may be underrepresented. But there is a methodology to the way we do things, and we want to ensure that all of our recommendations connect into with the gener general plan. And uh, we in always ensure that our projects and our artists include community engagement as part of the, the work that they do. So Gailene is going to go over these project recommendations, and then I'll come back with some of our future forecasting. Thank you, Laura. So we're very excited about this plan that we're presenting. Um, the recommended working art plan that is put forth for you is for projects to be considered over the next five fiscal years. Um, and that's with uh, the funding to be considered and approved by council through the city's annual budget process. The plan focuses on two areas, one being new public artworks that will be installed and also uh, consideration of the conservation and maintenance of our existing public art collection. The first project that we have listed on here is we're all very excited about because we got to hear about it in the work session is our recreation campus. Uh, there is public art planned for this campus. Um, it, it will be a focal point um, in the plaza area. And the really unique thing about this artwork um, is that it's, it won't be like traditional artwork that's very uh, static where it's a passive uh, process where an observer comes and just in, you know, looks at the artwork. This is going to be multi-sensory so that you can engage in this artwork and you can participate with it. Uh, council did approve uh, design funding of $50,000 in fiscal year 18 for this project, and the arts commissioner selected the artist team Creative Machines out of Tucson, Arizona. They have a lot of experience with working with multi-sensory public arts. We're very excited to have them engaged in this process as we move forward. The arts commission is recommending a funding level of $385,000 for the fabrication and installation of that artwork. 
And this project will be aligned with the construction and completion of the recreation campus, and you'll see more about this as that moves forward through the process. Uh, next project is Fire Station 188. Uh, the Arts Commission is definitely, you know, it, through this culture of art that they're building, they would like to see public art included at new city facilities. And uh, Council did approve funding for the replacement Station 181 and new Station 186 um, last year in the fiscal plan. And so they are looking that when new Fire Station 188 comes on board, they would like to see that kind of aligned, same funding of $40,000 at that station to include some architecturally integrated public art. Um, they find that it really can define that station and, and really reflect the community that is, it, it is built in. Um, another exciting project that I know Council um, has shown, uh, have a favorable look upon, is the Goodyear 75th anniversary, which is right around the corner. Um, the Arts Commission is recommending that we create a permanent public artwork that really commemorates this occasion, that really um, celebrates our past and looks for our future. Uh, this next year, the Arts Commission will be working to identify potential sites for this artwork to be placed and really working on what the scope of what this artwork can be. Um, and so the recommendation they're putting forward is $60,000 for that artwork. The next project is the light pole banners. Um, if council remembers, last year was the first year that we were able to exhibit four local Goodyear artist artwork that we had created, um, had those printed on to the vinyl banners that were displayed on 120 light poles throughout the city. Um, it was a very exciting process. Um, really great to be able to get Goodyear artists out there to create artwork that they were able to define their community and, and put their, their artwork out there for all of us to be able to see. Those banners um, are still in great condition. They will be hung on April 28th. The banners that you saw from last year will be going back up for another season. And the Arts Commission, looking at those, we really feel that we will be able to get three years out of those banners, that they still will look great. And um, they are recommending that we look at this project as a three-year rotation, that once the, we retire the banners that are being hung this year, um, we do look at um, enlisting four more Goodyear artists to put their face out there to you know, show us what they can do. And the recommended funding level for that is $8,000. The last two projects on the list um, do deal with conservation and maintenance. And uh, the first one is the Ziz refurbishment. Um, this project was part of the fiscal year 19, the city manager's recommended budget that came, it's coming for, for council. Um, the, the Ziz, it, it's had a lot of UV exposure. It gets a lot of sun on it and the paint is starting to show some wear. Um, not only is it aesthetically needing to be repainted, but also the fiberglass structure underneath can start to degrade if you know that paint starts to chip or flake off, and we want to ensure that we're taking care of our artwork. So the commission is recommending $30,000. That will allow us to bring Donald Lipsky, the artist that created that artwork, he's going to come um, to Goodyear with his team, and they will repaint that. I mean, it's a very technical process. There's a lot. It's uh, not as uh, you would paint a house. There's a lot of airbrushing because they give that, that textural quality to make it look like a real baseball. And so the final project on our list is Gila Blue, which is the public artwork at the Public Works facility. The shade structure that is attached to the building is starting to have some wear from the environment. Um, it needs some work on some of the tiles and some paint and some electrical that we're looking at. And the recommended funding level for that project is 24000 not only is the commission making the recommendations on these specific projects, but they're also very forward thinking. And um, I'm gonna turn this back over to Laura and she's gonna share a little bit more about their future forecast and where they're looking at public art for the future. So we're presenting four projects that are still very exploratory, but we always wanna have a forward view when we're looking out into uh, what's, what's happening. And we continue to always look at the city as a whole and look for areas um, where the existing placement is of our public art. So Goodyear Community Park continues to be in our vision. And while we're very excited to add art to the, um, the fascia of the stage, we also uh, would like to continue to invest in it by providing um, creative shade structures to add to, to, for the function of the shade, but also to enhance that concrete look of that park. 
We also envision a couple of areas where we'll have some placemaking statement art to create a sense of arrival at key Goodyear locations. And finally, we anticipate that traffic cabinet is going to, pilot is going to be so well received and so successful that we will be back with uh, recommendations for additional cabinets and cor corridors for artistic enhancement. So it is important to note, you know, the, this plan is about public art. Um, it is the annual public art plan. But, um, sorry, excuse me. The arts commissioners, um, they, they don't just only focus on public art. You know, they're very involved in making sure that they're planning multi-generational programming that really builds community, um, as well as creating engaging events that not only appeal to our residents, but it really attracts visiting populations to see how beautiful our city is and what we have to offer here. The projects they've recommended, uh, they meet our arts and culture uh, strategic plan. They meet the goals of the Goodyear 2025 20, general plan, as well as they're driven by community need. So um, at this time, we are asking for council's approval of the recommended annual art plan as recommended by the Goodyear Arts and Culture Commission. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you so much. Are there any speaker cards? No, ma'am. Anybody in the audience like to speak? All right. Then could I have a motion and a second to a uh, second to approve? Can I so, a motion? So moved. Second. All right. Heard from con uh, Councilman Hampton as a motion and a second by Councilman Pazillo. All right, Council, open for discussion. Councilman Loretano. First of all, Godlin, I want to thank you, Laura, and, and the whole Arts Commission for bringing this forward. I, I think it's a really good plan, and I, I am also glad it's two-phased that we're looking to take care of what we have. Um, like the Ziz, I wouldn't know that the fiberglass under, I mean, that's something I wouldn't know, but we don't want stuff to deteriorate because that's the whole look of our city. So I, I, I love the banners. I love the future shade structures. They, they look, the, I, the ones you have kind of are great. And I'm very excited to see, because you know I love all the climbing art and all that stuff, I'm very excited to see what you guys come up with for the rec center. So um, I support the plan. I think that the art is just another aspect of our community that makes it such a livable community. So thank you, and thank you to all the commissioners. Councilor Osborne. Thank you. Uh, great presentation, and I'm very thankful for all you uh, do in your, your committee. Um, you're really bringing that quality of life to our city that I know everybody wants to see and, and feel. And sometimes, you know, people don't think art is affecting them, but then, you know, they're, they notice these little bits that we have everywhere, and, um, and it really starts to play into how someone cares about their city. I think that my question really, um, you know, it's funny when you were presenting about um, the Ziz, and I was like, wow, that, you know, it's about 10 years old now. And so I, I understand that that, you know, is going to need some refurbishment. But I guess this is kind of a question to our city manager because, you know, we have an asset management um, section of our budget that I think it's great that our Arts and Culture Commission will recognize when art needs some upkeep, but at the same time, I question whether it should be coming out of their funding and not just out of asset management. So I know that's something for maybe a later discussion. I, you know, I certainly approve what you have, have presented, but I just wonder that, you know, um, maybe that should be in a different category and that you're still working on, you know, things of, of you know, projected um, excitement for our city, whether it's culture, whether it's, you know, um, different events, and uh, whether it's this great shade structure for the Goodyear Community Park <laughs> that I'm looking at that, you know, will have to be the f for the future. So I just bring that to the attention of the city manager. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody on this side would like to talk? Yes, Councilman uh, Pazillo. Yeah, I, I appreciate the plan. Um, I appreciate all the effort that you do into it. And I'm looking forward to um, seeing some of the end results of the pieces that you're going to bring before us. And again, I hope very much that the, uh, uh, the uh, coloring of the uh, items for the, uh, what is it, the boxes on the corners will be a big success. That's what I'm hoping. So again, thank you for all you do. Vice Mayor. Uh, thank you very much. I'm hoping that the, whatever the art piece is at the Recreation Center is something that the kids can either climb on or do something with rather than just look at it. 
um, because some of the pictures that they've shown shows the balls and the this and the climbing stuff or whatever. So I'm really looking forward to that. And maybe you can do more than one item for that amount of money. You can put several things in the park to enhance it. But thank you very much. We appreciate it. Well, I, I'm always the last. I can't I'll thank go, you I'll enough go. for I'll the go. growth. Oh, I'm I'll sorry. I'll How say the same I thing. I do that to you? I'm quiet. I don't know. Councilman so. Hampton, <laughs> sorry about that. So yeah, I just want to echo the same thing. So um, thank you so much for your hard work with your team throughout the year uh, to put together this plan. And I'm looking forward to uh, seeing a lot of the art to the community. It really brings a sense of sense of identity to the community and rallying points for the community to gather around as well. So I just uh, appreciate all your hard work and to the team as well. So thank you so much. Looking forward to uh, yeah more and more of your great ideas. So thank you. All right, it's my turn now for sure. So I just want to thank you for your good. Laura, you're all over on this, and, and I appreciate it. I see you frequently involved in this, and you are a great help to Gailene. And since Gailene's been here, this program has really grown. And to the compliments of the council uh, that you decided this was worth putting our dollars in, and the public sees that now. So great job, and we're excited what we're going to see in the next year. So we're going to give them one more uh, hand of applause to the committee, all right? All right, so we have a motion and we have a second. And so let's open. Uh, we've had the discussion, so let's follow it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Well, the ayes have it. Next, we're going to 7.2. We have three business items, and we will combine one into a one. We will combine them into one presentation. The first is to consider adopting number 2018-1863. 7.3 in the Water Infrastructure Improvement Plan Minor Amendment, and 7.4, approving the expenditure of funds for the water treatment facility and raw, raw water delivery pipeline. We have Javier Sedovich, uh, Director of Public Works, and Laura, is Lauren coming up on this? Wigginroth, Finance Manager of the Budget and Research. Tim Burkeen, Senior Project Manager, Barbara Chappelle, Utilities Operations, will be presenting. Thank you, Mayor and Council. We have multiple presentations for you this evening. Um, I'll kick it off. Just with a little bit of history, it actually, I'm going back in time, not, not too far back in time, just to 2016, um, since the adoption of the Integrated Water Master Plan in November of 2016, and subsequently your support of the need of, of the surface water treatment facility, Staff from several city departments, and that includes city manager's office, finance, budget, procurement, engineering, and public works as well, um, have been working diligently to put together all the elements needed to move multiple efforts forward. And we hope that we provide you with enough information this evening for you to feel comfortable supporting staff's recommendation. We also need to thank you, Mayor, uh, personally, for your support and active participation in our discussions with Newland. Um, tonight, we are in front of you to present for your consideration and approval the three major elements of assuring water supply to support development throughout the city. We're also extremely excited because our strategies have resulted in an extension of our partnership with Newland as they are our key player in good years, growth, uh, development, the Estrella Mountain Ranch area. We have three presentations in front of you, uh, and those presentations highlight a proposed agreement with Newland, uh, changes to the 2014 infrastructure improvement plan needed to in include the water treatment facility project, and finally, the request for funds to move forward with the design of the water treatment facility. Mayor and Council, a key point of the agreement is an expected $32 million contribution from Newland in exchange for the assurance of additional water from the city. What you see here are two main parts associated with the design and construction of the water treatment facility, as well as the infrastructure needed to be able to move water to the Estrella Mountain Ranch area for a total budgeted cost of $114 million for the project. The city will be managing the design and construction of the water treatment facility, as well as the raw water line that will extend several mi miles east of Goodyear uh, to a point of connection with the SRP system in the Avondale area. 
You will hear more detail in this later in our project presentation. But the current potable water transmission system at Strea Mountain Ranch cannot move all of the additional water that will be available from the plant. So a new transmission line is needed to allow for the delivery of water through the EMR system. This is not a line crossing the river, but rather a transmission line moving water within the EMR project. This line will be designed and built by Newland for a cost of $7.9 million. And it is part of the $32 million contribution. I also want to highlight some additional very important deal points covered in this agreement. As you see up there, as we assess the advantages of bringing our CAP allocation to the city through the water treatment facility, it became clear to staff that EMR could benefit from continuing receiving water from the north rather than implementing a project that was in the near horizon at the time known as the Southern Solution, which entailed drilling wells south of EMR and pumping water north. The Southern Solution project is a very important asset in Newland's water portfolio, so it remains as a future option for addressing the water needs at EMR. But this current agreement gives the city and Newland room to adapt terms in the future to fit the environment at that time. Also with this agreement, the city commits to deliver an additional 2.6 million gallons a day of water to, New to Australia Mountain Ranch. To put this in perspective, there are today over 5,000 homes at Australia. The total daily use is just under 2 million gallons a day today. So the additional 2.6 million gallons of reliable and replenishable surface water will support growth for many years ahead at EMR. Um, I mentioned in a previous slide, Newland, that Newland will be designing and building a transmission line within the EMR property for a cost of $7.9 million as part of their $32 million contribution. This active participation in the surface water solution again shows Newland's commitment to the project. Another key point was establishing the mechanics of managing the financial responsibilities of both parties. Newland has committed to make payments in line with progress of the project. As the city receives invoices from our contractor, Newland will be invoiced for their share of those invoices. Additionally, term, additionally terms for maximizing assurance of payment by Newland are built in the agreement. Newland will be receiving incremental rights to available interim water between now and when the, water, the plant is built um, as they participate financially in the project. And finally, because of their large investment, Newland will have active participation in the plant project discussions as well. They'll be a team member throughout the project. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, we hope that we have given you a good overview of the terms of the agreement, and we look forward to answering your questions. Uh, but first, if I may, I'd like to introduce Bill Olson uh, with Newland, and he'd like to address Mayor and Council. Mr. Olson? Mayor Lord, members of the council, we're very happy to be here this evening. Um, I'm Bill Olson. I'm the senior vice president with NNP Estrella LLC, NNP 3, EMR 3, um, and NNP 3, EMR 4. Those are technically the ownership entities. We commonly call it Newland, but for the record, I just need to state that because my general counsel would want me to do so. We understand um, that. And although he's a thousand miles away, he tells me he hears everything. Um, thank you, Javier, for a very informative uh, surface water uh, project overview. All of the entities that I just mentioned in Newland are very pleased to be here uh, this evening. Um, and I'd like to offer a few comments about uh, the surface water project uh, and also the NNP uh, city relationship. Uh, since acquiring Estrella in 2005, uh, NNP and its capital partner um, have invested tremendous amounts of capital in the community, obviously. And we have strived to thoughtfully grow that 22,000 acre um, community unto itself um, 
into a part of and an integral role in, a, in the city of Goodyear as it grows, as we're 20% of the city's overall land mass. Um, and throughout that process, we've tried to thoughtfully grow it with the city of Goodyear as a partner. And uh, that's a big part of our message here this evening is um, the appreciation we have for that relationship. So together we have grown Australia to nearly 16,000 residents occupying some 5,900 homes. Um, on some occasions it sounds like there are 50,000 residents when they want their voices to be heard. Um, we're glad they're enthusiastic. In 2017, uh, Australia experienced the highest sales uh, records in 14 years, 400 new home sales, um, and we comprised 40% of the city of Goodyear's permits, um, and we're honored to be um, part of all of that. Um, and these are wonderful results for both Australia and the city of Goodyear, um, and they have come about because of the quality of the partnership perspective. Um, we all, all the boats rise together and we all approach it uh, as a team and um, that's very important to us. We've seen it not only from the city team players who are in the audience and sitting uh, beside me, uh, but many other and as, as um, the NNP team members like Pete Tyke and some of our consultants who have also done an incredible job uh, as part of that team effort. So as the West Valley, the city of Goodyear and Australia continue to grow, so must the infrastructure to support that growth um, for the citizens and for the employers because we're seeing more and more of them. And not the least of that infrastructure is water. Um, the surface water project was a challenging under, undertaking and it required a great deal of vision and faith. Uh, the, vis the vision to identify a means to bring cap water to the city um, and the faith to uh, know that the right team members like NNP and the city could capitalize it and identify the right design, build, maintain teams to execute it. Um, we had explored various delivery methods, including the Southern Solution for many years, and I learned more in three or four years about Arizona water law than I ever wanted to know. And our esteemed attorney, Dan Muko, is here in the audience. Um, he's my coach and water mentor. Um, and we looked at a lot of different possibilities. Uh, NNP candidly and its capital member was a little apprehensive about the complexity and the logistics of how do you get the wheeling agreement and all those pieces to come together. Um, but after two years of evaluating uh, the alternatives, we thought that it absolutely was the best solution. So um, after receiving careful input, and I do want to list some of the team members, if I may, because they have put so much effort into this, um, the thoughtful input provided by Dan Cotterman, Javier Sedovich, um, Satovich, I'm sorry, Mario Salamendro, Joe Schmidt, Mark Holmes, Sarah Chilton, Rourke, uh, Don Sandstr uh, Doug Sandstrom, of course, Brian Dalkey. I hope he's enjoying himself. <laughs> yeah, and uh, other members of the city staff. Uh, together with the thorough, very thorough due diligence that was led by Pete Tyke and our consultant team and Dan Muko uh, with Quarles and Brady as our water expert, um, we concluded that it was a mutually beneficial undertaking and, and with 
not just a little bit of hand-holding walk to the capital partner to the right decision and uh, we're very pleased so the participation and development agreement for surface water that you have before you today has been methodically negotiated between NMP and city staff over the last six months following two years of research and due diligence. So NNP and Newland are very grateful for our strong working relationship with the city, um, not only for the water project, um, certainly for the city council, the mayor, and all of your leadership, um, but also on a day-to-day -day basis as Pete Tyke and our team um, engage other city staff members like Wynette Reed, Christopher Baker, Rebecca Zook, and their individual staff, and I'm sure more and more Julie in the future, um, we are very sincerely grateful for the long-term relationship and partnership that we have with the city of Goodyear, um, and we're really enthusiastic to continue to grow with the city. And I'm happy to answer any questions. And that will come. And thank you very much for your presentation. Do we want to, to I think we should wait on the questions. Yes, thank you. We'll call you back up for those okay. questions. All right. Very thank good. you for your presentation. Thank you. I thank you. may have gotten out of order. On You're fine with this. Right. Listen, I, I run this loosely. Do not worry. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. So what we'll do is we'll continue with the presentations and open it up for questions at the end. Um, next is Lori to talk about the impact. Stuff. Welcome, Lori. Thank you, Mayor Council. Thank you. And uh, I'm here. With, uh, I'm going to kind of cover item 7.3. Uh, we're just dotting the I's and crossing the T's on the impact fee plan. The, as you know, we're in the process of updating the whole impact fee, fee plan. But given the nature of this project, the size of it, and the scope of it, we felt it was very important to come forward and update the plan now to reflect this, the elements of this particular project. Um, the statute does allow us to make what's called a minor update or an amendment to the plan um, as long as we don't change the underlying service level assumptions in the plan that we're talking about the same type of infrastructure. So we're talking about infrastructure to deliver and, and uh, treat water and that there would not be an increase in the fee of more than 5%. Um, to get that, to do that amendment, we um, uh, needed to post our intent to do this amendment and the details of that uh, at least 30 days before you would act. Um, so that posting was done in uh, early February. Um, just as a, on a high level, we are only uh, adjusting the south area's impact fee plan um, the north or the central area water impact fee plan already includes a surface water type project that involved a plant expansion as well as a delivery line. So we feel like the infrastructure there is the same and is more easily interchangeable. Um, whereas here, as was mentioned, the Southern Solutions, which was previously in the plan or is currently in the plan, uh, is a well-based solution. And so we wanted to uh, adopt a plan to add the surface water solution. So essentially what we've done is we've added the surface water project based on the work we're doing already on the uh, full update of the plan. We have removed those southern solution projects and we have adjusted some of the other line items such as uh, adjusting the cost for that uh, line that we've mentioned that Newland will be working on to show it at the cost that we now estimate it and updating some current reimbursements to their current amounts owed and then uh, we have been, been able to accomplish this update without having a fee increase. So the fee will remain the same uh, with this update. And that's all I have. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Good evening. Um, Barbara Chapel, Utility Operations Manager. And I'm going to cover, uh, we'll start the uh, third item, or fourth item, 7.4 on the agenda and then Tim, Tim will close it out for, uh, for me. But just as a brief overview and, and history of the project, um, many of you recall the integrated water master plan was presented to council back in November of 2016 and it brought to light the physical limitations of our groundwater system. 
It identified a need to bring our surface water locally into our service area no later than December 31st of 2021. That date is so fast approaching. <laughs> and it included five options um, in which we could do this. Council, um, we requested feedback from council who uh, directed staff to begin looking at the option that included a partnership with Salt River Project. The water transportation agreement with Salt River Project was approved in January 2017, which I'd like to, I always like to say is lightning speed, especially for organizations as large as Salt River Project in the city. Later that year, through our CIP process, Council approved an 8 million gallon per day surface water treatment plant with the ability to expand to 16 million gallons per day at a future date. <clears throat> The project came with a $114 million price tag, largest in Goodyear's history. It includes a turnout structure at the SRP lateral system, a raw water pump station, raw water transmission main, our water treatment facility, which also includes chemical storage and operations building, reservoirs for storing our finished water, and then a distribution connection to our current distribution system. In January, Council approved a land purchase agreement for just under 28 acres of land where we will be locating this water treatment facility, and we have since closed on that property. That brings me to tonight. Tonight, we are here to request approval for an expenditure of $16 million of the $114 million project so we can be begin our design, the right-of-way acquisitions, permitting for the plant, and it also includes our owner's representative that we're in the middle of recruiting for. Um, one or more construction packages will be coming uh, forward in the future to complete the project once we get through the, you know, start getting into the design. Um, I wanted to show here is a depiction of the property that we have purchased, and it's where the water treatment facility will be located. It's just west of the main uh, Goodyear Water Reclamation Facility, uh, generally located south of MC85 and west of Estrella Parkway, and uh, will serve as uh, the entire site will will serve as a, the city's main water campus for our facility for growing the city and, and moving forward. Um, with that, I'm going to turn this over to Tim, and he's going to go over some more of the project detail. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor and Council, Tim Burkeen, uh, Project Manager. As Barb just described, this is a multifaceted, very complicated project. We wanted to explain just real briefly why we're delivering the project the way we are. Um, many of you for, you're familiar with the design bid build method, uh, also called the low bid. <laughs> Certainly there's a time and a place for a low bid type of project, but this isn't the one. Uh, it's the highest risk method of delivering a project and uh, a complicated project like we have, um, it's not the time and the place. Construction manager at risk, you heard earlier, Walt is delivering a project using the CMAR. I myself, one of my other projects is a CMAR project and it has its time and place for a, a typical size project where the engineering is uh, fairly well known and you want to bring a quality and cost component uh, into the project. But when you have a very large project and it's very complicated and you have a lot of stakeholders and not all of the things are known yet. We've got water quality uh, issues that we need to work through. We got pipeline alignments that we need to understand and develop. We need to bring on a team or bring on a firm and become a team with them. We need to make it a collaborative process. And that's where the progressive design build method uh, really shines. You can see you know, a depiction of the relationships. Rather than having relationships with an engineer, with maybe other consultants and with a contractor, we have a direct relationship with the design builder. And that design builder manages all aspects of the project. They'll manage the engineers, They'll manage the general contractors, the subs, various other consultants. And we will work together as a team as we progress through this design to come to construction. Uh, you also note 
Uh, we also have another box off to the left there, owner's representative. The owner's representative, which we are uh, currently in a selection process uh, as we speak, is uh, going to be a partner of the city. They'll be an extension of the city staff. Uh, their role is to be an objective uh, third party uh, looking after the city's best interests. Uh, they will help us with things, uh, you know, assist and advise us on technical matters, uh, plan review, some middle review, uh, providing us with their expertise and reviewing cost models, making sure that we're asking the right questions and that we're getting the right information. That's the role of an owner's representative. Having said that, I just want to uh, also just make mention that in this particular contract, although the owner's rep is going to help us and they will advise us, the city will retain all decision-making authority. We're not, gonna, we're not handing the project over to them. They will be an extension of our staff. The anticipated cost for that contract uh, will be uh, not more than 832000 which is a, a sum we've set aside for that function. And as I said, the selection process is in progress. Last week, we um, identified the top ranked firm and we're currently in discussions with them. Just to explain some more about the progressive design build uh, and how it works. It's a qualifications-based selection. We, we select the firm that best demonstrates that they have the qualifications and experience to deliver a project of this magnitude. Uh, it's a team approach, much different than a traditional uh, low bid, which is an adversarial relationship. And um, uh, this is a collaborative relationship. We typically have shorter project schedules. As Barb mentioned, we have a hard date, December of 2021, when we want to, we need to be providing clean, potable water to our citizens. So we will fast track a lot of activities. This is another facet of design build. Uh, we will probably have construction underway on some parts of the project while we're still under design on, on other parts. After tonight, uh, after we hope council uh, approves this expenditure, we'll be back in front of you again in a few months for one or more uh, construction packages. We call them GMPs, Guaranteed Maximum Price Proposals. There's a strong check and balance. Um, similar to CMAR, the design build is an open book process. As I mentioned, uh, collaboration, um, there's complete transparency between us and them. And if we have to make quality versus cost trade-offs, and there will be, there are in any project, we retain that control. We get to make those decisions. Real briefly, we started the solicitation in September. We went through the typical selection process you're all familiar with. We had the evaluation panel. We received, I believe, nine, nine uh, interested firms. We ended up uh, interviewing four. And uh, the team of CH2M engineers uh, best demonstrated that they had the qualifications and the experience to deliver this project. They bring with them Archer Western Contracting, Waterworks Engineers, and Swaybach Partners as part of their team. And as I mentioned before, we'll have a separate contract for the owner's representative. What you see here is a uh, illustration of what a similar water treatment facility will look like. Uh, this is actually another water treatment facility that CH2M recently completed in Woodland, California. Ours won't be exactly like this, but it, it gives you an idea of what generally a water treatment facility will look like. Uh, ours will be a, uh, initially an 8 million gallon per day facility uh, that's of uh, treated water, uh, expandable to 16 million gallons per day at some point in the future. Also, I just wanted to give you an idea of um, who we're partnering with and why we select them. CH2M Engineers has completed over $12 billion in water and wastewater projects in the last 20 years. Uh, globally, they have a staff of over 20,000 that they can call on. 
but they have a local presence of 250 professional staff in Arizona that are immediately available to us. They have received 19 awards from the Design Build Institute of America, and they also operate over 200 water and wastewater facilities with a combined treatment of over 1.6 billion gallons per day. So we're very happy to uh, present them to you at the, when we, when Javier is ready for questions, uh, we have representatives from CH2M if you have any questions for them. And with that, I will turn it back over to Javier. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. So, Mayor and Council, um, I've been waiting for this for two years to ask you this question. No, you have. <laughs> So staff recommends that you consider the approval of the three items in front of you this evening, and the team is ready to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Well, we're going to get to the city clerk. So will the city clerk please read resolution number 2018-1863 by title only, please. Adopt resolution number 2018-1863, approving a participation and development agreement regarding the construction and financing of phase one of the city's surface water treatment plant and related infrastructure, providing authorization and direction to take actions and execute documents necessary to carry out intent of the resolution and development agreement and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Just to remind you, these are three separate votes uh, for the resolution. So we're going to start with the first one on 7.2. Can I please have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Councilman Loritano and a, and a second by Councilman uh, Hampton. Did I get that right? Okay, open for council discussion. Who wants to start? Oh, good. I'll council start. member Laura Tana, go for it. Uh, for those who don't know, I live up there. I think I'm the only council member that lives up there right now, and we've lived up there for 15 years. So first of all, I want to thank you, Javier. I want to thank everybody else, uh, Bill, Pete, everybody from Newland there. Um, I do want to address, they are a wonderful um, community partner for Estrella. Um, and sometimes some of the things like, water people don't realize as long as your tap turns on no one really knows how it gets there it's when it doesn't turn on that people then we get the calls um so this is a huge investment 32 million dollars that they're coming and being our partners with this and people don't realize what a landmark um agreement this originally was with salt river project this is going to be great for the residents it's going to help the growth it's going to be great for Estrella, but not just Estrella, the whole city because we need the rooftops to bring the retail, to bring the other businesses we have. And anyone who's driven around Australia lately, you see houses in all stages of construction. So this is gonna be great, just not for Australia. It's gonna be a, a catalyst to continue the building, which will help our whole city. People don't realize that how much land is going to be developed up there. And this is a long-term, this isn't a short-term fix, this is a long-term solution. And some of the benefits that I know we've talked about before is um, I'm on my third. The water up there right now is, isn't so great. This is going to be a much higher quality of water for the residents, which will be a plus for them. You know, I'm on my third dishwasher. Um, and, and unless you pay for a, a, a system. Um, so this will be a lot of benefits for our residents up there. And I think that they do have to know um, that there is a huge financial contribution with Newland here. And this is a partnership and this is a long-term partnership. This is not something we're in and out. This is, you know, decades. We've got a hundred year agreement with Salt River and this is a long-term partnership that we're working together. So thank you, Bill. Thank your staff. Thank everyone and thank everyone there. And I am a hundred percent for this. I think it's a great plan. Anyways, Councilman Fazillo. Yeah, I couldn't have said any better than what you just said, Councilman Lortano. Um, this is a great thing, uh, long-term, um, the partnership, um, what you're trying to do, and you're right, it's been a long time in coming, and uh, the benefits that's going to produce as a result of it uh, long-term for the city is, is fantastic, so um, I'm on board, and all the financial questions I had answered earlier, so I've got none for you. Councilman you. Hampton? Yeah, and like Joe said, the chair answered it, or responded very very well. So, uh, yeah, I think as I say, thank you to the teams. Thank you to uh, Newland and the city for coming together. It's been a long time coming, and I appreciate everybody's hard work and diligently working toward a solution. Uh, a lot of good, uh, good, good work. A lot of uh, groundbreaking. A lot of good uh, ideas come to the table with the SRP agreements, anything like that. 
So, and like I said, also just, uh, yeah, it's, Newland's here for, it's a long-term partnership. So, uh, and we're looking forward to more and more growth and, uh, and seeing our, our city continue to grow. So South is, is a lot of our future here for the city of Goodyear as we keep building and building. So, uh, yeah, definitely a great, um, a great, um, a great thing for the city. So thank you to everybody involved. Councilman Osborne. Thank you. So um, I have to tell you, I have for the last couple years sat on the AMWA board, the Arizona Municipal Water Users Association. And Bill, to your point, I know more about water than I really ever thought I would know. And uh, really the exciting thing about water and the city of Goodyear is we have a historic story that is being told. And, and not only just within our walls and with SRP, but uh, AMWA knows those stories. The entire state is hearing about this story of this, this connectivity to bring us our CAP surface water. Even to the point that this was the story that I've taken a couple times to DC because part of the financing is those tax exempt municipal bonds that we need. And that was something that was always potentially on the chopping block for cities. So these are, these are stories that are so very, very important. And, uh, and I'm excited that, that Bill, that Pete, that Newland is part of this story and this partnership. And I know, as you said, it takes faith, especially when it's so complex like it is. Um, but that's what we have together is that faith and this, this um, completion. And, and quite frankly, this is one of those items that, you know what, failure is not an option. <laughs> so we are going to see this through and, and, and make sure that, that it does um, come out well. And for our citizens, you know, these are big numbers. These are, you know, we thought the, the park um, <laughs> that we were talking about earlier tonight was big numbers. This is really big numbers. But it is our future. It is quality water. It is um, something that we're finally being able to connect with that has been legally part, you know, we have water allocation on the CIP that we haven't been able to get. So this, you know, this is something that, you know, we have every right to. So I'm excited about it. Um, I thank you, uh, Newland, for this partnership. And, um, and I know all of us together are gonna be pretty proud by the time it's done. Thanks. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Thank you. Well, I would like to thank our staff for their diligence in um, working this um, agreement. I want to especially thank Dan Conterman, who worked so hard to put all of this together as well with Mark Combs and everyone. And, and Bill, we absolutely love our relationship with Big Tiger. He is such a great community partner. And it's an honor to be able to do things with all of you and show you our commitment that we think Estrella is the jewel of our city. We love that it's being developed. And our residents up there are wonderful people who will really be excited to have additional fresh water, Sherry, I'm sure. But I want to thank all of you that are involved because it has taken a long time to do this. and. Um, it's just, I hope, one of many wonderful agreements we'll continue to do together in the years to come. Well, I'd like to begin by saying thank you, Mr. Olson. It's, it's, I've been on this council since 2005, so we, we've been talking about that area that long of a time. Um, and you're right tonight when you said you're invested, and so are we as a city. And this thoughtful collaboration absolutely says that's the direction we're going in. And I, I would venture to say there aren't many cities around that have had this kind of partnership and advantageous to our citizens. And when we talk about good water, they're going, you're going to have it up there now. And, and you can't ask for anything more than that when you put that tap on and take a nice fresh drink of water. Uh, and with staff, Brilliant. <laughs> I have to tell you, I couldn't imagine you could put this together in the way that it's been done. It's comprehensive. Yes, it costs money, but hey, it's water. 
that's going to be the most ex expensive commodity. So I just, again, want to, first of all, the presentations were great tonight, okay? Very explicit, and I, I think I think people will be, uh, will hear all this as a, as a real accomplishment for the city. So thank you very much for this. And any other questions at all before we start the vote on this? Anything? And Javier, thank you. So we're going to start on 7.2, and we have a motion, we have a second. Now we're going to do a roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Campbell? Aye. Councilmember Loretano? Aye. Councilmember Hampton? Aye. Councilmember Osborne? Aye. Councilmember Fazillo? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. Good. Let's go to 7.3. This parting for the uh, voting part for the South Area Water Infrastructure Improvement Plan Minor. So moved. What, can I read it, please, oh, first? <laughs> I just want to get it done. I know you're excited, and so am I. Can I have a motion a second to adopt the attached minor amendment to the infrastructure improvement plans for the Southern Water Service Area section of that certain document titled Land Use Assumption Infrastructure Improvement Plan and Draft Development Fees, dated February 24, 2014, as permitted by the Arizona Revised Statutes, Section 9-463.05 and the Goodyear Code of Ordinances, Article 9.8. Um, so I hear a motion. I so moved. All okay. right. I heard a motion by v Vice Mayor Campbell and a second by second. Councilman Pazillo. Any open for council discussion on this? All right. Let's do a roll call vote, please. Oh, I guess I can do this all in favor. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. And let's go down to 7. Point, uh, vote, uh, excuse me, 7.4 to approve the expenditures of funds for the water treatment facility and raw water delivery pipeline project. Can I have a motion and a second? So uh, second. Up, 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 hold it, hold it. <laughs> oh, oh, did I Can I have a, we have to do this right, you know, or right, it won't right, pass. Okay, Can right. I have a motion and a second to approve the expenditures of funds and the amount of 16 million for the pre-construction services and owner's representatives for the Goodyear Water Treatment Facility and Raw Water Delivery Pipeline Project. I heard a motion. So moved. I heard a motion by Council Member Osborne and a second by second. Councilman Hampton. Open for council discussion? No discussion? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. The next item on business is a public hearing to consider the rezone of the Aldi. Well, we can say congratulations to everybody that just presented. Thank you very much. <laughs> and yes, you should shake each other's hands and hug each other because this yeah. is a great, great <laughs> accomplishment. All right, on to the 7.5 is a public hearing to consider the rezone for the Aldi at Australia and everybody says I say that wrong, Estrella Commons. Here we go. Open public hearing. Thank yeah. you, Mayor. Members of Council, good evening. Um, as you mentioned, this proposal is a rezoning for the development of an Aldi grocery store. The subject property is located at, on Estrella Parkway in Roosevelt, just south of the I-10. Um, the area consists of just over three acres. Uh, it's currently zoned preliminary planned area development as part of Estrella Commons. The proposed zoning is the city's C2 general commercial di zoning district. Uh, this slide has a few screenshots from the Australia Commons PAD book. The red outline box um, shows you where the, the proposed site of rezone sits. The area in red on, these, on both images um, is known as the district, which is a plan for commercial uses, office uses, and some residential. It was zoned preliminary PAD. So we didn't finalize the standards in the PAD, which means that in order to move forward with any development, they need to finalize the zoning from preliminary to final or hard, hard zone the property to one of the city zoning districts. Based on staff recommendation, um, the applicant chose to zone to C2 rather than finalize PAD zoning. The site will allow, or will follow all of the city's C2 development standards in terms of setbacks, height, um, as well as commercial design guidelines. I do want to emphasize that we, we know that this is a request for Aldi. Um, we do have the site plan uh, application in for review. Um, however, um, just wanted to be clear that the zoning does not tie the site plan to the Aldi development. And if for some reason the grocery store um, fell through, uh, it would be zoned commercial and could be developed with any commercial use that's permitted by the C2 zoning. 
Um, so staff is comfortable with that decision and doesn't see any issues moving forward. There were no residents living within the notification area, um, so we utilized the alternative citizen review process. Um, we notified property owners within 500 feet of the property. Um, we did all proper noticing to the site, including um, newspaper notification and posting the property. Uh, we have not heard any feedback, questions, comments, or concerns from the public. So just to reiterate, the development will be in compliance with the city's C2 zoning district, um, commercial design guidelines, staff recommended approval of the subject, subject to the stipulations in the uh, ordinance, and the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval of the item on April 11th. This concludes my presentation. The, applica the applicant is here, has a presentation available, um, but I, I'm happy to any answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. So, the, so I have this right. The presentation, if the, uh, the uh, representative from Aldi, do they want to speak now, or is this? If they wish. Speak now, is right. So are they coming forward? Thank you. I just want to clarify that since we have changed that process. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Wendy Riddell with the law firm Barry Riddell, 6750 East Camelback. It's my pleasure to be here this evening on behalf of Aldi. Um, really, I, I don't need to give a presentation. Um, we really enjoyed working with staff. We're in full agreement with their uh, recommendation and stipulations. Happy to answer any questions, however, that you might have. I appreciate that very much. Thank you for being here. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right. Now I'm going to close the public hearing. And will the city clerk please read ordinance number 2018-1384 by title only, please. Adopt ordinance number 2018-1384, rezoning for approximately three acres located at the southeast corner of Estrella Parkway and Roosevelt Street from preliminary planned area development zoning district to the C2 general commercial district. Amending the zoning map of the city of Goodyear, providing for correction, severability, and effective date and penalties. Thank you very much. Could I have a motion a second, please? So moved. Second. Heard a motion by Vice Mayor Campbell, a second by Councilman Laura Tano. Open for council discussion. Councilman Pazillo. Welcome aboard. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Welcome, welcome aboard. aboard. <laughs> he's saying welcome. Oh, he's saying welcome. Okay. It kind of was garbled a little bit there. Um, any other discussion? Yes, Councilman Hampton. Yeah, so yeah, welcome. We're really excited to have Aldi here as part of our Pedro community. And uh, looking forward to uh, shopping there. I know a lot of residents are pretty excited about about you uh, setting up shop here. So, so yeah, I'm looking forward to working with you for a long time. So, thank you, and uh, yeah, looking forward to shopping there. Thank you, Councilmember Laura Tana. I want to say welcome as well. Um, when people heard that Buckeye was getting one, my phone was like, "Why are we getting one?" I'm like, "No, we are." And so we have a lot of very. You're going to have a whole bunch of customers as soon as you open. So welcome. Welcome. <laughs> well, I've said this story before, but uh, we were in northern Germany living near the North Sea in a small village. Um, and so that was just before we moved to Goodyear. And uh, we wanted peanut butter without having to travel the highway to Frankfurt or to Rhine Main to get it at the commissary. And so Aldi had our peanut butter, right, Ron? <laughs> and so I, I mean, I. When I heard they were coming, I, it was just it dear to my heart because they, they helped us through uh, the peanut butter stage with the children. So <laughs> greatly appreciate it. So, all right, let's do a roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Campbell? Aye. Councilmember Hampton? Aye. Councilmember Osborne? Aye. Councilmember Pazillo? Aye. Councilmember Loritano? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. Thank you very much. The last item, 7.6, is to consider adopting resolution number 2018-1868 for an amendment to Centera LLC. And we have Stephen Cento, Plan Review Manager, presenting. Stephen? Good evening, Mayor and Council. I am here this evening to present the fourth amendment to the development agreement for Centera LLC as it relates to the remainder of the Centera Crossings development. Um, as you may recall from previous presentations by others, uh, the remainder of Centera Crossings is approximately eight acres of property located at the southwest intersection of Van Buren Street and Estrella Parkway. The property is adjacent to the Dignity Health Emergency Room right here, uh, the developing a villa project. 
and includes uh, the Pad 3 or Dunkin' Donuts, as you may have heard, site right here, which is nearing completion. Uh, it's also across uh, Australia Parkway from the Hudson Commons, future Hudson Commons multifamily and commercial parcels that will be located here and here. Um, the amendment to the agreement addresses one remaining development related item regarding the future traffic signal at the intersection of Australia Parkway and Sentara Drive. All Sentara crossings will have access to this intersection right here. Uh, the staff report provides a comprehensive explanation of the amendment, so I will briefly summarize. Staff has confirmed that the only remaining obligation under the Sentara Development Agreement applicable to this property is the obligation to make an in-lieu payment towards the cost of a traffic signal at the intersection of Estrella Parkway and Sentara Drive. The existing terms related to the in-lieu payment are problematic because the city runs the risk of having to collect the in-lieu payment after the property has been developed. This Fourth Amendment ensures the city's receipt of the in-lieu payment towards the cost of the signal and provides reasonable time frames that will enable staff to budget and complete the traffic signal once it has been warranted. In closing, I would like to extend an appreciation to the city attorney's office as it helped us work through the deal points of the agreement to protect the city's interests. In addition, I would like to thank Christian Williams with the city manager's office and all the other departments involved for helping us to confirm the remaining obligations under the original agreement. That concludes my presentation and now I'll be happy to answer any questions for you. Thank you so much. Will the city clerk please read resolution 20-18, excuse me, 2018-1868 by title only, please. Adopt resolution number 2018-1868, approving the Fourth Amendment to Development Agreement with Sentara LLC regarding remaining obligations under development agreement, providing authorization and direction to take actions and execute documents necessary to carry out intent of the resolution and development agreement and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Could I hear a motion, please? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Vice Mayor Campo and a second by Councilman Hampton. Open for council discussion. No, no discussion? I want to say that. Good solution. Yeah. Oh, you do have a. No, I'm good. I'm good. No? All right. I have dis I, the discussion I have. Nice, nice compliment, Christopher. But Chris, very nice. We heard it loud and clear, and we appreciate that. All right. Discussion is finished. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Campbell? Aye. Councilmember Osborne? Aye. Councilmember Pazillo? Aye. Councilmember Loritano? Aye. Councilmember Hampton? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Motion carries. Good. We're on the informational items. So, uh, Councilor, do you have any accommodation reports or current events? Where you've been? Councilman Pazillo? Just real quick, I had the uh, opportunity to do a shark tank at um, Mabel Pageant uh, Friday. And it's amazing what fifth graders can come up with. Um, and it was a great time. So uh, our future is looking bright. But if there's anything, to, but I got to sit down with and listen to those kids. And I know uh, Chief Louise was there as well. And I had a great time. So Great. Anybody else? Oh, Vice Mayor? I would like to publicly thank Chief Louise and Lisa Nagel and his staff because they went to Desert Edge. Oh. I mean, Estrella Foothills. Sorry, wrong school, right? Estrella Foothills. Australia Foothills calculus class and uh, talked to the kids and, and showed them how they use everyday math just in regular jobs with the fire department. And it's the, the instructor said it was kind of like it turned a light bulb on for the kids. They really got it. And I just want to thank the chief for reaching out. And I hope you're able to do it at the other schools. I read the article and it's pretty outstanding. So when they, yeah, when they can relate to something in real life, uh, in excitement, like a fire department, I can understand that. Anybody else here? Yeah, Councilman Osborne. I just wanted to thank um, all the staff and the chamber for putting together the um, Southwest Valley Small Business Summit, and um, always appreciate the the gathering of our businesses and and our staff helping. You know, um, really giving input to some things that they don't always get to hear. And so I appreciate that exposure. Also, I want to thank um, Councilmember Hampton for, <laughs> I don't know, I guess it's a good thing. I don't glow, but I got to um, have a great tour of the nuclear power plant and get to go into containment. And I did come out not glowing, so I think everything was good. But um, yeah, yeah. well, I guess, if, yeah, you're right. If we turn all the lights off, maybe there'll be something. But glowing can be good or bad. I am always sparkly. <laughs> so, but uh, it, was a, it was a great experience, and I really appreciate the asset that we have in Palo Verde. 
Councilman Loretano? Uh, I, I, this kind of went out on social media. Um, we have another A-plus school in our community. Estrella Mountain Ranch was awarded the A-plus designation, so I'm very proud of them up there for Ms. Marine, our principal, and all the students. It's an IB school, so um, great job. We all agree with that one. Anybody else? All right, uh, anything for the city management report? Thank you, Mayor and Council. It's my pleasure to recap our first Shred-a-thon event that we had this past Saturday. Um, so last Saturday, starting at 7 a.m. and ending at 11, uh, we had vehicles that started lining up as early as 6.30. And by 11 o'clock, we had 382 of our residents dropped off 18,140 pounds of documents to be shredded, which equates to, and this is, uh, which equates to conserving the following resources, 154 trees, 3,447 gallons of oil, 63,490 gallons of water, 43,536 kilowatt hours of energy, and 907 cubic yards of landfill space. The uh, shredding company commented that our event was one of the largest turnouts they'd seen in a public shredding event. And even though some of our residents waited up to 45 minutes in line, the response was very positive. So moving forward, uh, the police department plans two shedding events annually moving forward, one in October and one in April. And in the future, because of the demand we saw, we'll have two shredding trucks available to prevent those long wait lines. Uh, so I wanted to thank our officers, staff, volunteers, and explorers who staffed the event and made it a huge success. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. Is there any staff summary follow-up action required? I, I didn't hear any tonight. But, okay, all right. So any inquiries of the staff? All right, does anyone want anything on a future agenda? All right, the next meeting will be a work session followed by a special meeting on May 7, 2018, beginning at 5 p.m. And just another thank you for the celebration you've all shown me in the last few days. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, thank you. This meeting's adjourned.